So today we're going to demonstrate how to do tuning fork testing. You take a 512 hertz tuning fork and vibrate it on your elbow or on your knee, but not on a hard surface. You're going to put it in the center of the patient's skull, either on the top of their forehead, on the bridge of their nose, or if they have their own teeth, on their top two incisors. You're going to ask them where they hear the sound. A normal response is that they hear the sound everywhere or in both ears. So, where do you hear that sound? Everywhere. Okay. If they can't really tell, the most uh, distinctive answer will come from the teeth. Where's that? Everywhere. And that was louder in both sides, right? That's called the Weber test. The Rene test, if they lateralize on the Weber, to the left or to the right, you want to see what's going on with the Rene test. So let's say this gentleman told me that he heard the sound better on the left side. That means he either has a conductive hearing loss on the left side or a sensory neural hearing loss on the right side. So with a Rene test, you're going to again vibrate the tuning fork on your elbow or your knee, and you're going to place it on the mastoid bone. This is sound number one. Mm -hmm. and near the opening of the ear canal, parallel to the lie of the tuning fork. So you don't want to do it this way, you actually want to do it this way. And you're going to say, this is sound number two. Tell me which is louder, number one or number two? Two. And that is a normal response, that air conduction or number two is louder than number one. It is also seen with, with a non-profound degree of, of sensory neural hearing loss. If the degree of hearing loss is so bad that it's in a profound condition, the patient may not be able to tell or may not be able to hear even the air conduction against the ear. We're now going to um, demonstrate what it would sound like if you had a conductive hearing loss. So by pressing your tragus, which is the thing in front of your ear, against your ear canal, you're going to give yourself about a 20 or 30 decibel conductive hearing loss. Mm -hmm. I'm going to repeat the Weber test and then the Rene test, and you're going to tell me where you hear the sound. Okay. This is the Weber test. Mm -hmm. So tell me where do you hear that sound? It's louder on the left. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do it on your teeth just to show you again. And it's significantly louder on yes. the left, correct? So the teeth are really a great way to test if, um, if you're not quite sure what's going on at the forehead or at the top of the nose. And now uh, give yourself your conductive loss again. And now I'm going to do a Rene test. This is number one. And this is number two. Which one is louder? Number one. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure, go ahead and give yourself a conductive loss. Mm -hmm. I'm going to revibrate the sound. And I'm going to hold it against his mastoid. And I'm going to say to you, let me know when the sound disappears. Okay, so there's no more sound there. Can you hear anything here? Mm -hmm. So, can you hear it here? Yes. So, that's a significant conductive hearing loss that you got. That's one way to do it. It's obviously faster to say one or two, but you can confirm it by asking, did the sound go away, and then making sure that air conduction can be heard. So that's how you do tuning fork testing. 512 hertz tuning fork, vibrated on your elbow or your knee, and do the Weber and Rene test, and it will really help you distinguish when a patient presents with hearing loss, whether that hearing loss is sensory neural and needs referral right away, or conductive and needs local management. Thank you.